Welcome back. Representative Matt Manweller will be involved in the debate on proposed tax increases this year. Manweller was named to the House Finance Committee and Labor Committee for next year. The 2015 session begins on January 12th and is scheduled to last 105 days. The representative stated he expects a lively debate on the Finance Committee, which handles tax increases, tax exemptions, and changes in how taxes are administered. The Labor Committee reviews laws related to issues such as industrial insurance, unemployment insurance, collective bargaining, family leave, and safety and health standards. He is also serving as the House Republican Caucus Assistant Floor Leader. He will help coordinate the debate and be involved in the strategy and policy decisions of the caucus. A deer took a wrong turn in Moses Lake and ended up trapped in a residential fence. Moses Lake Police responded to an animal in distress call in the 3700 block of West Peninsula Drive and found a female deer wedged in the fence. According to Moses Lake Police Chief Dave Ruffin, the officers, along with a nearby resident, were able to free the deer unharmed. In Northwest News, an elderly woman trying to spread the Christmas cheer had three Scrooges break into her home and open all the gifts under her tree. For CNN, reporter Ted Scouten has the story. Some of them are being rewrapped in you know, some of the things we had bought yesterday. Aretha Washington and her niece Susie have a big job ahead of them, rewrapping all the presents that were under the Christmas tree. Three boys broke in and rummaged through all the packages, taking what they wanted, leaving the rest in a heap. They went through the gifts back under the tree. They went through the gifts. So evidently it wasn't what they were looking for. So they just threw them and left them there. This is one of them that was wrapped up, um, that they unwrapped in the truck. And the, um, the three, the four boxes there, they had unwrapped them, open up. But it's closed in that box, so I guess they didn't want any clothes, you know. So they left them there. It happened Thursday morning while Washington was home in her room. She had no idea anyone broke in her back window and was creeping around her house. She found out after painters working at the house behind her saw them crawling out the window. And he was able to tackle one of the guys and tuck the pillowcase that which had the TV inside. But the guy got away, it was three of them. Inside, the three empty drawers looking for items to steal. When they came in here, they pull out the drawers and stuff and um, they found the camera out of this room. The one who lost the most was a nine-year-old girl. This is the little girl. Um, this is her room. In her room, they took a tablet and a Game Boy. Under the tree, she had presents from Project Angel Tree. They grabbed the best ones, then ran off, apparently not understanding this is supposed to be the season of giving, not taking. We can pray for them. We can do that. Pray that the Lord really touch their hearts. Another set of Scrooges knew what they wanted when they stole a rare drone, but they left something crucial behind. Cairo's Nick McGurk reports. So they ran through here, went, went underneath the bar. Steve McIrvin showed us what surveillance video proves. Two men broke into his shop early this morning, and in all of 10 seconds, they stole one of the rarest drones in the country from his drone retail space. In all, they made away with some $3,500 in drones from McIrvin's business. The drone looks a lot like this one and was a prototype in such high demand, people all over the country want what the burglars took for themselves. It's like the Apple Watch of drones, yeah. There's, it's not out yet, it's, there's a lot of pent up demand for it. Not only did the burglars grab a rare drone, came around, grabbed the Inspire One, then they came and grabbed a, a fistful of these copters like this. They also grabbed some toy drones, but they didn't grab a remote for the rare prototype or a charger. They didn't grab the charger, they didn't grab any of the extra the batteries for it, so they'll only fly at one time. <laughs> it's a job most people thought only Santa could perform. When an astronaut in orbit needed a new wrench, he didn't have to wait for a shipment by rocket. Instead, NASA engineers emailed one to him. This is International Space Station Commander Butch Wilmore and the first uplink tool printed in space. The ratcheting socket wrench was designed on Earth, emailed to the space station, then manufactured using a 3D printer. From start to finish, the process took less than a week. 
The new wrench will ultimately be sent back to Earth so researchers can see if there are any functional differences between tools made in space and their more typical counterparts. And that's going to do it for us here at i 501 News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.